Did you know a healthy gut is literally one of the most critical steps in having a healthy baby? And if you've ever struggled with infertility or you want to have a healthy pregnancy soon, then you really want to listen to this. I'm Jordan Reasoner, and today I'm going to share a clip from a recent interview I did with Krista Recchio, a clinical nutritionist and holistic health counselor and a fertility expert. And she's going to dive into the gut fertility connection and some of the simple steps to improve your gut health to have a healthy pregnancy. Let's listen in. Um, well, like I said, I mean, gut health is so inextricably connected to hormone health. And that is the foundation of your house, the center of the human universe. And when you can get things working in the gut, you improve your immune health, you improve your hormonal health, you improve your cardiovascular health. And so improving the health of of basically all of your systems all at the same time, that's going to dramatically boost your chances of fertility. And so you, the thyroid is so responsible for, it's such a key player in ovulation and in fertility, and the thyroid and the gut are so inextricably connected. And so that's there's there's no way that you can't look at your gut and i would suggest just starting out 3 months before you know you want to conceive start running some tests start figuring out what's going on in the gut and then build a process from there or if you don't want to go through that entire thing you just start with a gut healing program. I mean, that's exactly what is happening in solving leaky gut, right? People are going through and and rebuilding the lining of their gut and they're eliminating pathogens and they're reestablishing good bacteria. And a lot of times that is all somebody needs. And if not, like once you heal the gut, then you can start looking into other manner of toxicity, you know, other root causes of infertility, the MTHFR genetic mutation, heavy metal toxicity. You can start looking further if there's a problem after that. But 80% of the time, if you can heal the gut, then like you said, you start having regular cycles and you feel just so empowered that your body can work and is ready to, to have that safe environment to create a new life. That's powerful. 80% of the time, if you address the gut, then you can make a baby. I love that. So you mentioned a couple of things there. Let's, let's dive into that. Let's go a little deeper. So how do you address the gut in someone that you're working with who's struggling with infertility? Are there common root causes? Are there tests? Where do you go first? What do you recommend? Yeah, sometimes it's just as simple as, as, you know, controlling inflammation and getting out the foods that don't work. And so I'm thinking of a couple who just had their first baby. They're in Minnesota. After five years of trying, when their infertility doctor, their fertility doctor told them to give up, and um, now they have their first son, and they were pretty much as simple as really just getting them off of that standard American diet and running food sensitivity. I just ran an IgG panel on both of them to check their food sensitivities, and then we really started to remove everything that didn't work for them. And of course, I feel like every single woman, um, man as well, who wants to conceive should get off of gluten because it's pro-inflammatory and it's not good for the gut. It's not good for the hormones. And so really getting them off of the foods that didn't work for them and then repairing the damage to their, to their gut and putting them on anti-inflammatories and really boosting uh, their hormones. It was, it was as simple as that. And so um, it took them about six months to get pregnant. So that's where I would always start is really looking at a food sensitivity panel, seeing what works for someone. If they've been struggling for a really long time or if they have, let's say, PCOS, then I'm definitely going to run a stool test. And so there's two different ways that you could do that. One is I like to I like to work with BioHealth and run between a six and an eight day stool panel to get a really good sampling of the colon versus let's say your MD might just check you for one or two days. And so there are no tests that are that long. I have people collect two samples from two different days and put put them in the same container so they kind of double up. And so that improves our accuracy of finding something. And then once we know what's happening, and if they have a parasite, you've got to figure out basically, you know, the pathophysiology 
physiology of it and its behavior, and then you can start to eradicate it. And I do that usually with a twofold process, which is, you know, the, the Eastern approach is build up the health of the body and you don't have to worry about foreign invaders. And then the Western approach is kill foreign invaders. And so usually it's a combination of both of those. You have to do something to kill the bad guys because the system and the body isn't strong enough on its own to get rid of it. But then you strengthen the system, and this is where you know you're preparing yourself for pregnancy. It's never just about you know getting rid of excess and toxicity. It's always about strengthening, nourishing, building. Really thinking about you're going to be nourishing another human life soon. So it's about kind of the combination of of both of those things. And um, there's another test that you could. There's another way to do this without bio health is you can do. Uh, doctor's data. If you want to look for, that's a great test. And it's only a three-day test to look for pathogens. And you actually induce diarrhea to get uh, a good sampling um, of what might actually be happening there. So I would definitely look at a stool test. I would also run an, an, usually an IgA test to check the mucosal lining and to see, kind of try to get a gauge on the leaky gut. And so those would be my three go-to tests to start off with. And then we usually build a plan from there that's very specific to the person. But there's a lot of tenants that I want to talk about today, a lot of things that your listeners can do and foods that they can get out and foods that they can bring in and supplements that they can take to, to start taking care of all of this.